السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وكنتني إن شاء الله تعالى with سورة صاد and uh, with verses 12 to 16 we'll go through verses 12 to 16 إن شاء الله تعالى so open the مصحف and repeat after me إن شاء الله سورة صاد سورة number 38 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقالوا ربنا عجل لنا قطنا قبل يوم الحساب اصبر على ما يقولون واذكر عبدنا داود ذا الأيد إنه أواب إنا سخرنا الجبال معه يسبحن بالعشي والإشراق والطير محشورة كل له أواب وشددنا ملكه وآتيناه الحكمة وفصل الخطاب وقالوا verse number 16 وقالوا ربنا عدل لنا شد عدل لنا قطنا قطنا قبل قل قل قبل يوم الحساب قل قل at the end اصبر اصبر because of the third letter with a كسرة you start with a كسرة on the همزة so you say e اصبر and the ra is late على ما يقولون واذكر عبدنا عبدنا قلقلة عب عبدنا داود ذا الأيد and the دال قلقلة if you stop or you continue ذا الأيد إنه نور الشدة takes two counts and then the, ten, the, the mad أواب قلقلة إن نور الشدة takes two counts سخرنا سخرنا الجبال معه يسبحنا بالعشي والإشراق والإشراء the ra is heavy and the qaf of course is heavy and there is قلقلة والطيرة محشورة إخفاء كل له this is إدغام وذاو دغو النا وذا رتون كل له and then you have the four to five counts أواب قلقلة at the end وشددنا there's two dales here one with a فتحة and one with a سكون So the one with the sukun, you make kalqala. You move it a little bit. You say, وَشَدَدَنَا وَشَدَدَنَا مُلْكَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْلَ الْحِكْمَةَ وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابِ وَفَصْلَ The fat is light, the sad is heavy. And then, وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابِ And the ba is with kalqala. The verse is continuing with the disbelievers and the nations before. Of what happened to them, and for those who are present and those who were at the time of the Prophet والسلام, they ought to be warned against the fate and the outcome of the disbelievers and how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala punished them, so that they repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and believe in Allah and follow the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That the fact that they're all waiting, and everybody's waiting when the day of judgment occurs. Nobody will be given a second chance, not even for a minute, not even for a second for them to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what was in verse number 15. 
So when that happens, uh, they said, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا عَجِّلْ لَنَا قِطَّنَا قَبِلَ يَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ They say our Lord hasten to uh, our to us qittana which we'll talk about that which basically means our record of good and bad deeds so that we see it before the day of reckoning lana qittana qabila yawm al hisab this is basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is condemning the mushrikeen the disbelievers in their dua against themselves to have the punishment of Allah Right, so they're basically, it's a, one of the ways of making mockery of the truth. So when they've been warned against the punishment, they say, where is it? Bring it, bring the punishment. And qittana, al qitta is the book. And what is meant here is the portion of the punishment or what they uh, basically written in the book about their punishment. And as this is, like is mentioned in Surah Al-Anfal, اللهم إن كان هذا هو الحق من عندك فأمطر علينا حجارة من السماء وتنا بعذاب أليم. When they said, Oh Allah, if this is the truth from you, then rain upon us stones from the heavens or bring to us the painful punishment. Uh, this one of the meaning of the tafsir. The second meaning is that they asked a portion of Jannah if if it's there, you know, from being being disbelievers, uh, that they would have a portion of that in this life. And this is a way of, again, making mockery of based on their disbelief. Uh, so, as Imam al-Tabi, rahimahullah, he said, they're basically asking uh, or making that dua that, oh, Allah, give us whatever we deserve of good or evil in this life. They don't want anything in the hereafter because they disbelieve in it. So, uh, and this is how uh, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or disbelieving in the Day of Judgment would lead people to say such ignorant matters and that's the stubbornness against the truth uh, being in haste of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they asked for qittana as Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he took the opinion that this is referring to their share of their punishment before the day of reckoning before the day of recompense which is the day of al-qiyamah uh, and uh, they say that as if it's a challenging thing then the punishment should be, come, should be upon them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, اصبر على ما يقولون واذكر عبدنا داود ذا الأيد إنه أواب which means be patient of what they say and remember our slave Dawood endued with power verily he was ever oft returning in all matters and in repentance towards Allah. So اصبر على ما يقولون be patient because these um, statements from them was as a way of uh, expressing their disbelief and mockery. So the Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Messenger وسلم, to be patient with that, that harm that is coming from them and giving glad tidings to the Prophet وسلم, that as a result of his patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the end result is victory for him. And he is reminding him of Dawood salam. Dawood al aid that means he had uh, might and power uh, and that's in knowledge and, and amal and action and al-aid is different than al-yad al-yad is hands right al-aid is power so we don't confuse the two words or someone would say that see the hands means power no the hands is a hand but al-aid means power which is different than the other word which is al -hand, the hand so reminding the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam of the, the strength and the power of Dawood and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him patience. And the Prophet والسلام, used to praise Dawood والسلام, his ibadah. The best night prayer is the night prayer of Dawood and the best fasting and the fasting of Dawood. Imam Sa'di rahimahullah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet والسلام, be patient of what they're saying. As the previous messengers, they were patient with what their people said to them because that is not going to harm the truth in any way or form. For the, whatever they're saying is not going to affect the truth. And they're not going to harm you in any way or form by these statements that they're saying. They're going to harm themselves. So, and to, to he asked the Prophet والسلام, to seek help to be patient with Al Ibadah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and to remember the affairs of those who worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, because it helps you to be firm and to be patient. So whenever you find yourself 
uh, you know, needs patience. Seek that by staying with sabri or salah. Be be patient and seek help in ibadah and salah. And one of which, one of the means is to seek help by getting to know the nations before the people of patience, the messengers of Allah. Uh, so that that would help you to get, to gain strength when you look at the ways of Allah on earth. When you see that those who are patient, Allah subhanahu wa taala gave them the best of the rewards. And Nuh alayhi salam was mentioned a thousand years. You know, if you if you if we're commanded to be patient for a thousand years, and then after that you'll have the everlasting joy. It's worth it. But subhanallah, the ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, we don't live for a thousand years on the face of earth. So we're, we're commanded to be patient for counted years, you know, and uh, so, so, and then at, at the end, it's an everlasting joy by being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Dawood alayhi salam that he was of a person of us, of strength in his ibadah, in his heart. And he is a web. He's someone that is always returning to Allah in all of his affairs with love, fear, hope. Uh, dua, repentance, right? Always rajah, a web that means constantly returning, fixing oneself, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful characteristics uh, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Dawood alayhi salam for people to follow. Inna sakharna al jibala ma'ahum yusabbihna bil ashayi wal ishraq, which means really we made the mountains to glorify, to glorify our praises with him, meaning Dawood alayhi salam. Uh, in the Ashi after the midday to sunset and Ishraq after the sunrise till midday. So this is from the how he was a web returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his worship to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mountains to be under his uh, control by the will of Allah for it to make tasbih and ibadah with him. And there are in constant ibadah of Allah. He was able to hear that and they would make tasbih with him and the voice will be heard whenever they would make the tasbih. Can you imagine the, the mountains and the sound of the mountains making the tasbih and the dhikr uh, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing, the attayr, the, the birds, and uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and they would make the tasbih by his tasbih, by his uh, making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. بالعشيه والاشراق in the time of the of the midday and بالاشراق in the in the morning والطير محشورة كل له اواب and the tire محشورة the tire is uh, gathered for him uh, you know are stationed in the in the skies كل له اواب all of that all of them are in state of obedience to داوود عليه السلام returning to him making tasbih with him, making ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him. And awab here refers to being obedient to him. So this is all the favors of Allah upon Dawood alayhi salam as a result of his strength and his ibadah. And the, the way that a person is steadfast in ibadah, the, the more the person is upon that, the more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make ways for him and, uh, and victory and aid. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَشَدَدَنَا مُلْكَهُ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْحِكْمَةَ وَفَصْلَ الْخِطَابِ وَشَدَدَنَا مُلْكَ That means we, we gave him uh, strength, we, we made his kingdom strong and gave him al-hikmah and sound judgment in speech and decision. Uh, so this is another favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Dawood alayhi salam uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him uh, شَدَدَنَا مُلْكَ gave him strength in his mulk, in his kingdom. Uh, and with all of the different creation of Allah that were under his power and his control. Uh, and this also refers to the understanding, to the uh, hikmah, to the wisdom, to the justice, to be upon what is right. Uh, all of that is was given to Dawood alayhi salam. And fasl al-khitab, that basically the, the ability to judge, uh, that he would judge among uh, people as it's going to be mentioned how he uh, judge among the disputes of the people and Sa'di rahimahullah he says this is by mentioning the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Dawood alayhi salam that he gave him this uh, great sovereignty and power with all kinds of means and we gave him al-hikmah the wisdom, prophethood, 
great knowledge wa fasl al khitab the ability to uh, f- fix the disputes among the people which is a great favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if someone has that ability so uh, this is basically some of the favors of Allah and then after that it talks about what uh, Dawood alayhi salam did with this dispute that was presented to him when we go through the words wa qalu rabbana ajjil lana they said meaning the disbelievers rabbana our lord ajjil from hasten from ain jim lam and this refers to something in haste something quickly like al ajala min ash shaytan hastening hastening is from shaytan so ajjil uh, lana make in haste for us qittana as we said the qitt from qaf ta ta which is our portion or so or refers to a book and it's also referred to uh, when someone is given uh, a portion of something so basically it refers to the book or a piece of uh, of a, a book yani the word al kutub can be a piece of paper so anything that is written something that is given to them which is basically refers to the punishment and so on qittana qabla yawm al hisab before the day of al hisab qabla before yawm al hisab yawm al hisab the day of al hisab reckoning from ha sin ba isbir be patient from sabara ala ma yaqulun on what they are saying wadhkur and remember from dhakara abdana our slave daud daud alayhi salam the aid the possessor the possessor of the the owner of al aid the possessor of strength as we said and the root of it is alif ya tal as we said this is different than yet this is different than hands different roots and different everything right uh, <clears throat> that's why when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wal ard bi aydin wa inna lamusi'un right that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says was samaa banaynaha bi ayd the heavens we build it with might right which is different than hands right uh, and the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the attributes of allah we believe in it without any uh, resemblance or similarities to the human beings and without distorting the meaning of it so here al aid is the power innahu uh, indeed he is and he was a web repeatedly turning from alif wa ba uh, comes from alif wa ba which is raja returning uh, and some of uh, the meaning of it is that in the 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 tongue of the abyssinians it refers to the one that is making tasbih or making dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the other word of it that is mentioned in the verse with regards to uh, the the mountains they're making tasbih so this is uh, some said that this is in the abyssinian way of saying things uh, and also uh, the one that has mercy the one that returns with repentance returns always constantly returning to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, and this is the awwabin those who repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly inna sakharna that means we subjected from sakhara al jibal the mountains ma'ahu with him yusabbihna glorifying from sabaha bil ashi al ashi in the evening and it starts with from after asr till maghrib this is al ashi from after asr till maghrib wal ishraq is from the sunrise to the duha time which is always virtue to make dhikr at these times wal ishraq from shin ra qaf the sunrise wat tayra and the birds same three letters mahshura assembled gathered from al hashr al yawm al hashr the day of gathering so the birds are gathered for him kullun uh, all of them lahu to him a web repeatedly turning from the birds are obedient turning they're making tasbih with him وشددنا and we strengthened from shin dal dal shadd is when you when you tie something when you strengthen some a shadd is toughness وكانوا اشد منهم قوه they were more strength uh, intense in their power وشددنا ملكه his kingdom واتيناه and we gave him from alif ta ya al hikma wisdom he refers to the prophethood and knowledge and so on وفصل الخطاب and the decisive فصل al khitab speech from kha ta ba and first al khitab the decisive speech that makes things very clear whether it's admonition whether it's as mentioned afterwards dispute when there's a dispute things are confusing who's right and who's wrong and where the truth is with 
and how to, to fix it and how to make it clear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Fasl al Khitab. Uh, and then after that, again, the story of that dispute will be mentioned. Uh, we benefit, of course, from the verses uh, to stay away from these evil actions of the disbelievers, mockery, stubbornness. Uh, it's haram to ask for punishment uh, and to be in haste. This is the ways of the disbelievers of mockery the truth and uh, the command to be patient with what they say. Be patient, that means be firm upon your deen. And whatever they say of evil is not going to harm you if you're patient. And to seek patience in ibadah, in your worship, and you seek patience in following the ways of the people of the truth before you, and the, the virtue of strength, to have a, a strong heart, a heart that relies upon Allah, and that is attained by the ibadah. And we see Dawood alayhi salam as the best salah, is the salah of Dawood, the best fasting. So there's a relationship between how a person is physically helped in this life to be steadfast and the ibad. Very important subject. When fitan comes, knowledge by itself or information in that sense, the knowledge does not save the person only. It needs to be with it ibad. The ibad, when a person is upon worship of Allah, uh, even uh, the, this is the means of being saved. And it's been, as the ulama they say, throughout the history also of Muslims. When, when a fitan comes, people can be easily uh, taken away, even people of knowledge. And that's, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And the ummah is, uh, receives the mercy of Allah. Nobody is, is, is safe from making mistakes. But those who have the proper knowledge and they are upon the ibadah, they are the ones that are more likely to be saved from fitan and things like this and to be guided. So that shows the importance of the ibadah. With the importance of ilm. Ilm comes first, but uh, make, beautify that ilm with ibadah by following the Prophet, والسلام, the obligatory ibadah, the optional acts of ibadah, being busy with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided Dawood because of this. And to the, the virtue of returning to Allah, the virtue of repentance, the virtue of everything you return it, you refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the physical strength came to him as a result of that. So don't rely upon yourself with the physical strength, rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the virtue of having the ability to be precise and decisive in the speech, in disputes, to uh, fix it and to make bring peace among people and the hikmah and the wisdom that is learned and taught from the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshallah ta'ala uh, tomorrow. وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله